Yo, what's up with it, y'all? It's JD, and I'm back with another quick video, back with my homeboy, James. And today, we're gonna be talking about back levers. What progressions do you need to do to get to the back lever? You know, all these calisthenic skill exercises, you know, people are always asking, what's the progression to get there? How do I get there? But our philosophy on that is more so, your progression is that base that you build. And for the back lever in particular, we're just gonna be going over two exercises that we kind of think are integral to building up that strength base to do the back lever. Neither one of us really trained back lever. You know, where we never did any progressive exercises. It was just kind of one of those things that we kind of ended up coming out here playing around with and ended up hitting the back lever. And it was something that just, you know, we added to our tool belt. So James, why don't you go ahead and uh, talk about that first exercise. Yeah, I see the... For me, the exercise I'd recommend for the back lever would be um, the dips, but leaning forward during the dips and going super deep. Um, it's a dynamic exercise. It's not static like the back lever, um, but when you hit a super deep dip, um, you actually put your um, arm into the exact same position that you're gonna be holding in the back lever. Um, but, I mean, before you even attempt a back lever, make sure you have the strength levels necessary because honestly, you could get injured very fast. Um, there's a ton of torque. It does put your shoulders in a compromised position. It puts your bicep tendon in a compromised position. So, you know, make sure you do have that foundation first before even attempting your, your first lever. And honestly, when it comes down to all these calisthenic skills in general, I personally would say that you almost want to be doing calisthenics and just mastering the basics for at least one year. You know what I mean? If you're somebody who's starting off without a fitness background or somebody who's starting off without an athletic background and you already don't have like a good base of athleticism and strength, you want to just go hard on the basics for maybe a year, get proficient at those, and then maybe start playing around with skill work. And the exercise that I'm going to talk about that I think helped me in terms of having that build up that, that back lever strength was skin the cats. And the reason why I say skin the cats is uh, integral exercise in terms of building up that back lever strength is because there's a lot of core work that goes into the back lever. And a lot of times when people think about core, they just think about the six pack and they just think about abs. But you know, the core is just our base. It's this whole area, this whole center region of our body. And with the back lever in particular, I think that back core is really, really the place where you really need to have that strength. Because if you try to come out here and do back levers without having a strong back core, that's a that's a lower injury, that's a lower back injury yeah. waiting to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you gotta think about it, these skills in terms of, you know, yeah, it looks cool and you know, it's, it's something to accomplish, it's something that's a goal to have. But at the end of the day, if you try to progress too fast and you try to do these skills before you're ready, you have to think about it. Just like James said, you got the shoulder injury that can to take place, you got the bicep injury that can take place, you got a lower back injury that can take place. And these are all injuries that could possibly set you back for months and months and months. You want to keep all this in mind, so before you get started on trying to do back levers, handstands, front levers, all these exercises, you want to build that base. Like I'm going to always preach, pull-ups, push-ups, dips, squats, lunges, get all that together, and then you'll be good to go. Yeah, I mean, it's just like we talked about in the muscle video, it really is the prerequisites. I mean, the prerequisite itself is the movement. If you, if you master all the prerequisites, you can pretty much do any skill movement you want. Um, and there's no limit on how good you can get at pull-ups, at push-ups, at dips. Um, there's an infinite limit on what you can hit on the prerequisites, so why stop training those? Why, why stop focusing on that? Um, you think weighted, you think weighted, uh, like weighted basics help out with these movements as well? I think weighted is definitely, um, I like to call it kind of a, a lazy progression in calisthenics because there's always a body weight exercise that you can do to make it more difficult, whether you know it's um, increasing the torque or putting your muscle at a disadvantaged position. Um, but weighted movements are definitely a good tool. And you know we've talked about this before that the recovery required um, from weighted movements is a lot higher. And then it also does add another element of um, potential injuries or um, 
just pushing a little bit too hard. So I'd say I'd keep the weighted movements to maybe once or twice a week, but then do the body weight seven days a week. And on top of that, if you're doing weighted calisthenics, you want to wait until you actually get extremely proficient in terms of your form and your volume in terms of the basic movement. So if doing 10 or doing 15 to 20 dips is just way too easy, then maybe you might want to add a little bit of weight. If doing 10 to 15 pull-ups is too easy for you, then add a little bit of weight. But just like me and James were talking about yesterday, some days I come out here and 15 pull-ups is a struggle for me. So for you know for for the majority of people out there we're not going to come out on our a game each and every day so i think weighted is good just like james said but you want to keep it to maybe once or twice a week for me personally i'm more of a once a week dude if i have a day where i have a cheat day or something i eat too much i'm just like let me use all these let me use all these extra use calories the carbs. <laughs> exactly and put them yeah. to work but guys that's all we got for today uh the progressions on a lot of these skilled movements simply comes from having a strong base of the basics and calisthenics. You can have more days than bad, uh, more bad days than good in this. That's to be expected, but then just, you know, show up the next day. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Keep pushing forward on a journey and enjoy the process, guys. We'll highlight you guys later. Peace.